I mentioned earlier that the Conservative Party Vice Chairman Michael Fabricant, in fact, we just heard again from Nigel Farage, had written a report calling for a pact between his party and UKIP at the next election. And I spoke to him earlier and asked him about it. Apart from a, a quick spurt of twittering last night with Nigel Farage, I've had absolutely no dealings with UKIP. This is an internal discussion document, but I've publicised it because I think it deserves publication and full debate. Uh, which, if we ever chose to implement it, and it won't be my decision to implement it, would be made in 24 months' time. Yes, but it would be an electoral pact. You are it saying, if it got together, pact. that UKIP wouldn't put candidates up in areas where Tories are standing. That's completely right. And, you know, I think we're living in an era of electoral pacts and coalitions nowadays. You know, who would have thought before 2010 that the Conservatives would have entered into a coalition government far more deep than an electoral pact with the Liberal Democrats? Yet yes, we but, did. But they did that after the result, not an electoral pact beforehand. So I come back to that question. So it looks as if you are worried about the result of the 2015 election. You don't think you can get an overall majority unless you get into a pact with UKIP. Not exactly. What I'm saying is, I don't know what the situation is going to be like in 24 months' time. Could be that we could win at an election outright. In fact, I'm pretty confident that we might do just that. What I'm doing now is saying, but hey, we should have a number of strings to our bow, and this might be one of them. And you know, it all comes about because it was Nigel Farage who said in his party conference speech that he would entertain such a pact. Now, I know that last night in a spate of twittering, he said, no, we're at war with the Conservatives. I gather this morning he was rowing back a little bit from that. And I understand that you've got him on the programme, possibly, uh, yes. today. And we will and put you that to ask him. that very question. But yes. look, this is not a debate that we'll be having with UKIP, as I said, until possibly 24 months from now, and that debate might not be necessary. But if he's saying no and this is war now, you're left with egg on your face before this, this document's even been discussed. But he keeps changing his mind. First of all, he said he would do it at the party conference. Then he said last night, this is war. And then I gather this morning he's saying, well, there's a possibility. Look, at the end of the day, we should all keep our powder dry. I don't make up strategy. It'll be for the decision of 10 Downing Street in 24 months' time or whatever if they choose to explore this further. In the meantime, I just want a debate going and I think I've succeeded in that. What could you promise him? What would entice him back? If you say, he's, you know, he obviously is vulnerable to changing his mind, what could you offer him in terms of government? What would you? Well, it wouldn't be me no, for but a what start. Would you? But what would you... Would, could you see Nigel Farage in Cabinet? <sighs> It would be totally a decision for David Cameron. What I would say is I think Nigel Farage has got a lot of talent. And, you know, we bring in people from other parties to do things in government. But that would be a decision for David Cameron and George Osborne and those who make up strategy. And I still say that, you know, if people want a good deal in Europe, they'd be better off voting Conservative. The problem is they don't always do so. They vote UKIP and that can cost votes. Do you agree with Nigel Farage that David Cameron has let everybody down on the issue of a, of a referendum on Europe? No, not at all. Look, you know, there's been a great deal of deception about the whole issue. David Cameron said that if the Lisbon Treaty were not put, were not endorsed, was not made, you know, into a, a full treaty, by the time of the last election, we would have a referendum on whether we signed the but treaty. But lots of your colleagues feel they've been marched to the top of the hill and then marched straight back down again. I don't think they do at all. It was very, I very clear. So. David Cameron made it very, very clear that if the Lisbon Treaty were already signed by the time we got in, there's hardly any point. It's been what? It would be closing the door, the stable door, after the horse has bolted. What are you promising, UKIP, though, if they did agree to not put candidates against Conservatives? What are you promising them? What I'm saying is that we would have to give, and this is just based on Nigel Farage's speech, we would have to give a cast-iron guarantee that after the general election there would be an in, a straight, as Nigel Farage calls it, a straight in-out referendum on Europe. Do you think that's actually achievable, to have a cast-iron guarantee? Nothing is cast-iron. Well, what did Nigel Farage say? He said it would have to be signed in blood. Listen. If we feel in 24 months' time that we want to deal with UKIP, and as I said, it may not be necessary, it may not be advantageous, I'll donate a pint.
good for you and obviously campaign for it. But Downing Street have distanced themselves from you today, um, having called for an electoral pact with UKIP. A number 10 source said Michael Fabricant does a great job campaigning in by-elections, but he doesn't speak for the party on this issue. No, quite right. I don't speak for strategy, and that's absolutely right. They're saying, my, really, you my, should my, shut up over this issue. Mine is a discussion document, and I want it discussed. I don't want it discussed yet with UKIP. As I say, it's something, a decision that might have to be made in 24 months' time. But that decision will be made not by me, but by David Cameron, George Osborne and other close advisers. Should David Cameron come out and fully retract his statement that some UKIP members are loonies and closet racists? Well, I heard the interview just yesterday on the BBC website. It was an interview he did on LBC Radio back in... 2006. Yes. Well, the truth is, some UKIP members are. I'm going to be very controversial now and say I think some Conservative members might well be, and some Labour members, and some Lib Dem MP. But David Cameron hasn't too. said that about Labour and the Liberal Democrats. He has specifically said that some in UKIP are fruitcakes, loonies, and closet racists. Should he fully retract that? Look, I heard the interview. I don't think it needs retraction at all. Hardly likely to get Nigel Farage on board until he does. Nigel Farage is an intelligent man. He'll do what he thinks is best for the country in its relationship with the European Union. Let's see what happens in two years' time, if it's necessary. At the in the meantime, I've got the debate going.